first stop, Melbourne. And then we hopped on a short one-hour flight to Sydney. And uh, even though Sydney is Australia's largest city, all the animals are right there. You can visit all the animals from the outback at Taronga Zoo, which sits right on the harbor. After a beautiful ferry ride across the harbor from downtown Sydney, we find ourselves at Taronga Zoo. We hop onto a quick Tahoe-style gondola ride, and we get a bird's-eye view of all the attractions before we go see them on the ground. Well, a trip to Australia wouldn't be complete without seeing the Sarcophilus heresy. You may remember it spinning rapidly in cartoons about 20 years ago. It's the dreaded Tasmanian devil. And not so scary looking up close. Maybe the dengo ate your baby. One of the things may be funny from Seinfeld, but always interesting to see dingoes live in person. Uh, they're taking a little bit of a nap right now, it seems, but they did peek their head up for an inquisitive sight. One of the most interesting facts is that while you think of dingoes as being so Australian, they're actually not native to the country. They actually were brought over by Asian fishermen about three or 4,000 years ago. One of the most amazing things from the zoo is you always get a great glimpse of the beautiful harbor and city around you. It really seems to show you how Sydney and the surrounding harbor seem to really just blend with nature. And of course, a trip to the Taronga Zoo wouldn't be complete without checking out the emus, a visit of all things Australian. Even the emus and the wallabies seem to be living together comfortably. Wallabies pretty much chill out during the day and then they head out at night, fairly nocturnal, going after our herbs and plants to eat. They're even sharing their carrots with the birds, emus, birds, and wallabies all living together happily at the Taronga Zoo. What is that? It may look like a porcupine or a platypus, but it's actually an echidna. While it has spikes like a porcupine, it actually lays eggs like a platypus. And platypus and echidnas are the only two mammals that actually lay soft eggs. Here comes one again. What's amazing to see at the Taronga Zoo is not just amazing Australian species, but African species that we don't get to see in the United States. This is the bongo, and it may look small, but it's probably about six feet tall, and it actually is one of the largest species of antelopes. It has long ears and big horns, and those long ears help it hide in the dense bush from predators. One of the most exciting things, the most popular attractions at the Taronga Zoo are the snow leopards. There are estimated to be only 4,500 snow leopards left in the world. And the fact that two snow leopards here, two cubs were just born, a male and a female, several months ago, shows many of the exciting things that are happening here at the Taronga Zoo. Another great animal to see when you come to the Taronga Zoo are the meerkats. They're really fun to watch, very playful in large family groups. And they really remind you that when you come to Sydney, it's important to find a little time to lounge and relax. We're here with David Schaap, and uh, David, you're an expert on the Australian animals, so tell me about these little guys, the koalas. Okay, well, we've got this particular koala here. Her name is Kui, and uh, she's one of our females, and at present, she's actually carrying a little joey inside her pouch. Koalas are a marsupial, so like any other marsupial, they, they have a pouch, give birth to, to very, very immature young, and they, they move into the pouch straight after birth. And, and develop in there. Right. And tell me about the things that differentiate a koala from any other kind of animal. They, you were explaining the fingers, first of all, or their little digits. Yeah, yeah. They've, they've, they've got five digits, much like humans, but theirs are basically set up so that they've, they've virtually got two thumbs that, that oppose the other three digits. And, uh, and that just helps them to, to climb a little bit, gives them a, a good grip onto the branches. Really long claws on the end of those digits to, to sink into the bark. Right. And uh, yeah, it just helps them get around. But they're actually not that active. I mean, we've seen so many of them just taking a snooze. Why is that? Mm. They sleep for about 20 hours a day. And that is basically a, a result of their diet, these eucalyptus leaves. And there's, there's a lot of myths that go around that the koalas are actually drunk on the, the fermentation of the leaves, uh, which is really amusing to us because it, it's just completely untrue, unfortunately, as, as fun as it sounds. Um, it, basically, the leaves are made up of about 80% water, so the koalas get the vast majority of their water requirements directly from the leaves, and they, they very rarely need to drink water from any other source. But what they don't contain are a lot of things like proteins, complex carbohydrates that would supply the body with energy. So the koalas know that they've got a fairly energy poor diet. And they instinctively know that they just need to sleep for as much as they can to, to save energy. So yeah, they, they do that for about 20 hours a day. How about their fuzzy ears and their funny little nose? What kind of, how do those adapt to nature? Why are they good for them? Um, to look cute, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing that better help somehow. Well, the, the nose, Survive that they've the got a, a really good sense of smell. They do. Um, I mean, they, they do have big ears because obviously uh, good hearing is an, an, an importance to any uh, wild animal. But the, the nose actually does help them. They've, they've got a very good sense of smell. And you'll notice when koalas eat, they actually grab the branch and sniff their way through all of the leaves. And it's theorised that they're, um, they're, they're trying to find the highest water content in the leaf. Right. And they, they it's... 
again, theorise that they can actually smell that. We should know why he's so close and you're not touching him. <laughs> we try to stay very hands-off with the koalas. They... In not touching them, they basically don't perceive us as being a threat because we, we never do anything wrong to them. He doesn't seem to care. He doesn't care. We're all <laughs> no, here. No, no, exactly. So they, they don't see humans as being an issue because we, we try to, as much as possible not to have any contact with them. <laughs> all right, this is where we will just get a little bit hands-on. What are you doing? <laughs> you just be a good girl just for five minutes. How about we climb up there? Was he just curious? Yeah, I think so. I mean, who knows what goes through their little minds at times. But, yeah, it obviously looked like something enticing to have a nibble on. They can jump about two metres. The eucalyptus leaves are not that plentiful. They won't eat just any of the eucalyptus. No, that's right. They, they are very fussy eaters. There's over 600 species of, of eucalypt growing naturally in Australia. But of those, they only eat about 40 to 50 of those species, depending on the region that they live in. So, yeah, they are very fussy eaters. But this one appears willing to chew on just about anything at the moment. <laughs> well, we've got a mother redneck wallaby here and she's got quite a large joey inside her pouch now. Um, that little fella will be getting to the size where 